Intermediates, what's up? I'm Tessa Lark, uh, excited to be with you here. Just a couple pointers as you're working on this tune this week. I wanted to talk a little bit about this shuffle bowing that you're going to see throughout this entire version of Winton's tune. What is a shuffle bowing in bluegrass music? <laughs> One eighth and two sixteenths, and that is a bowing. Even if it doesn't sound like that rhythm as you're playing, that is a bowing that is kind of constant in a lot of fiddle music. So if you ace that bowing, then you can play a lot of fiddle music. You see it in the first bar that you play. Here, shuffle. Bar three in particular. If you play it, it sounds like da 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 da, right? But if you take all of the notes away and just play open strings, what do you get? It's all the shuffle bowing. Isn't that crazy? So. This sounds like a fast tune with a lot of notes, but if you isolate the bowing in your mind, which is the groove house, by the way, as long as your groove is going steady, then all you need to think about is your left hand in that bar and a couple of string crossings. That bar makes me think about also double stops. I was talking about how there are so many double stops in bluegrass music. Bar three, the melody is... But you actually don't have to do as much string crossing when you play the double stops. You only have to go half as far. So what these double stops are, basically just harmonizing what the melody would be. the string less. So that's a simpler way maybe to think about these double stops. And the other thing I wanted to talk about are these slurs over three sixteenths. You see it right away in the first um, bar you play. There's probably going to be a tendency to want to play it late or too short, this is a place where it'd be really good to have your trusty metronome by your side and make sure that the, the rhythm is really pure. So, right? It's not... Don't crowd it. Make sure it's a full sixteenth note because that actually gives a lot of feel to this music and accent those offbeats too because it adds a lot of character. And in the shuffle bowing, if you also want to emphasize a little bit the offbeats, that'll give you a good off-kilter feel too. say that all these grace notes that you see they're almost always on the downbeat like in this melodic section those are pretty much on the beat and playing that section now just made me think of the type of sound that you want to get in lyrical sections in bluegrass music typically a no-no in classical music to play banana notes you know what I'm talking about And this is not a banana note, but it can sound a little bit like it. And what's happening in fiddle music is there's a little bit, there's a feeling of the pulse in the bow. So you hear it a little bit. It's so subtle, it's not. But if you give a little impulse, so it's, the bow doesn't start fast right away, right? That sounds more classical, a lot of speed, but 
It's a little more resistance at the start and then a little weight into the middle of the note and that'll get you sounding a little more authentic to the style. And you will see that I'm using vibrato as well. Um, vibrato in bluegrass music and old timey music is much slower than in classical music. I'll play you this um, part in a classical way. <laughs> But in bluegrass, just slow down that vibrato, slow down your bow, lots of resistance. So have fun, and I'll see you all this weekend.